So guys, I know this is a messy situation and I'm actually a youth pastor, although my hairline is receding and I'm pretty sure you'd like to move on with your life as much as I'd like to move on with mine. But I believe that we have an apology to make to a brother by the name of Saw Ra Garvey. Now, I know a lot of guys here can take sides. This is YouTube and people are not so loyal all the time. And people have their preferences with their favorite YouTubers. Stop the show. And I hope I'm your favorite YouTuber. Subscribe and hit the bell because I got that fire content. But needless to say, I know there's some guys that like, let's say, Kevin Samuels or Fresh and Fit or hmm, drum roll, please. Just pearly things. Celebration music, Dima. Right. I know a lot of people like just pearly things, at least on record because the views per video don't really show that you guys love her that much it actually shows you love me more but let's not get into that topic today just part of things is getting some popularity over here in black youtube and when mr sarah garvey an ex-collaborator came out against her you know there were so many people that um had a a, a disagreement i saw the anton daniel stream where you know, Sarah Garvey came out there and to be fair to Anton, he asked some really tough questions on that particular interview. And maybe we can play some of those tough questions right now. All right. So I got a couple questions for you and then we could just figure out how the conversation is going to go. You know, why come out with the video now? Like why? Why drop now? What prompted this or what inspired you to create this uh video? There's a couple of reasons. Um, like I said uh, in the video, I had been working with Pearl for about a year now. And some of the things that I saw um, didn't, didn't sit well with me. I think Pearl is a little naive in my personal point of view. Mm. And um, some of the stuff that she tried to get me involved in um, was a little bit let's say unsavory for me wasn't down it was it, it wasn't my it wasn't my cup of tea as we say over here and then she tried to generally ge generally sun me right after being a content creator that she uh reacted to before she actually got to the uk and helped her grow her channel and then i said okay cool fine don't worry about it and then what i saw Pearl leaving comments in people's comment section saying that she's coming for everyone, just wait. Essentially, that's what I saw. So I said, okay, cool. Um, with this whole colonial mindset that you've got, specifically within the space, built up generally of black men, um, I've seen that she's been treating them disrespectfully, um, treating them like they are employees, but semi semi slaves when it comes to the contracts and stuff so i said to myself okay you want to go to war let's go to war but wasn't you but you've worked with her for a year right i've worked with her for a year but i had i hadn't worked with her for about three about three months so what happened for the other nine months that you were with her that you would take that because you were taking money from it all right you you was doing stuff for a fee right of course yeah i don't, I don't yeah of course but you felt like she was a colonizer while you were also taking money from her for a fee though right and you were helping her grow her channel the deeper that i got i started seeing what was going on around her and the type of setup that she had so i just said you know what i'm not really feeling this and um also, I saw her, I saw her ego grow um, with black people to treat them less than who they actually are. I think something needs to be said. So you felt like so she was it. a colonizer or she had this colonizing mentality or spirit, even yeah. though she was a bit yeah. naive. But you it took you nine months to be able to separate yourself from it, right? No, it took me, uh, probably took me nine months to really see the operation, if I'm honest. Sara, you're a very intelligent man. You're a very intelligent man. I seen you on the video, <laughs> you'll be any of the video where you was like, well, if we don't do it, or if you haven't subscribed and you watch two videos, what do we have? Beef, so on and so forth and all of this. Come on, man. Like, whatever opinion that you had of her, you didn't just develop it 
within the ninth month and then say, you know what? Well, I'm out. No, no it, it wasn't. It was a developing psychology. I won't lie. But um, once I saw what 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 the actual the operation was like, I was like, yeah, I, I don't think I'm comfortable with this. So was it that, that you was wasn't it. comfortable with the contract that she offered you or you wasn't you wasn't comfortable with her mentality? Because you, um, you, you were uh, cool enough to actually entertain the possibility of a contract after you had done done business with her. Right. I guess the question that I'm really asking is how come you didn't dedicate yeah. your energy, your resources and your platform into developing other black people from the very beginning? If you were all about focusing on black people. Um, my 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 ethos right for me is I don't hate people and I don't. Um, disrespect people, but I want black people to do the best for themselves that they can do no matter where they are on the planet. I've always said that. They call it black nationalism. I don't care if you're in Zimbabwe, America, the UK, if black people can help themselves off the bottom of the social economic ladder, I'm all about it. So, I, like I said, I work with everyone. If you see my content, I've interviewed all types of people because um, I don't hate people. I'm about but you utilized your platform to promote her also. platform, though. So, it's a difference, though. Go say again. I said you utilized your platform and you worked with her for over. Yeah, I mean, months. It, it's it, a difference it was, between was, interviewing somebody and 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 you know creating content, but then working with them and sitting in a studio, and then also even considering the possibility of a contract. That speaks to a completely different thing, right? And when you sit around somebody or you spend enough time with somebody. You develop some sort of a relationship, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a working friendship relationship type of thing. You start to when, whenever you have somebody's phone number and you have the ability to call them, it's a completely different conversation. Though. Would you agree or would you disagree with that? Yeah, she was a business associate. Of course. Yeah. One hundred percent. And so this particular time. Right. You're saying that based off of what you told me is that when you seen her in the comments saying that she's going to come for people then that's what yeah. sparked it for you to create this video about the person that you've worked with for the last year. Um, like I said, I haven't, I hadn't worked with her for three months prior to that. Right. And I had been, um, for my own uncomfortable reasons, I'd been watching what had been going down. Um, there are some things behind the scenes, like with certain individuals within the camp that I'd been hearing and conversations that I've also had. And yeah, I just I just felt like um, specifically when it comes to black men, I'm about ownership um, and we can do business. Don't get me wrong. You and I could do business, but I'm never going to try and own you. So, again, these are these are these are valid questions. Um, and me and Sarah Garvey have an interview coming up pretty soon. So, I mean, I, I don't I don't begrudge the journalism of Mr. Anton Daniels in this case. Right. I get it. He's trying to get something from the guy and to see if he can back up what he's talking about. But see, you know, I, I didn't have this other information because Sarah Garvey had initially said something like this. So when you have a colonial mindset and you have a management who tell you what to say, what generally happens in my personal point of view and what I actually saw was that she began to start paying people pittance. She began to start offering contracts to people that owned them just like a colonial master would. Case in point. Myself and Pearl sat down to have a conversation about me signing to her contractually. And I want to make this very clear. I have never signed to the Just Pearly Things Network. I have always been an independent. Pearl has known that, and I have known that. And so anytime I worked with Pearl, we had agreed a fee, and I worked for that fee. I have never been signed to the Just Pearly, Con Just Pearly Things contracts. However, she has signed a few Africans, namely King Riches and Auntie Jenny. Now, I have no problem with a King Riches or an Auntie Jenny. However, if we look at the contracts that they signed, you would understand the reason why I use the term colonization and colonial. Now, myself and Pearl sat down to have a conversation and she expressed to me that she wanted to do a new segment for her show. In that segment, she said that she would like me to present a topical new show on a day-to-day -day basis. So I said, okay, 
no problem. Talk to me. What are we talking about? And she said she would want me within her studio four days per week. I said, okay, from what time? She said from 10 in the morning till five o'clock in the evening. And I said, okay, well, that is seven hours. I said, so working four to five days a week for seven hours is essentially a day job. I said to her, okay, so what is my guaranteed fee at the end of the month? What is the salary? And she looks at me and she says, we do not do guarantees and we do not do salaries. He's saying that she's trying to colonize him, right? Basically, and you'll find out in more about this in my interview, Sar Garvey is going to claim that Just Pearly Things wanted him to use his own YouTube channel to come into her studio four days a week, seven hours a day to take 70% of the profits from his own YouTube channel that he worked building up. But that sounds like, it can sound like a lie, right? It really can. It can sound like it's not the truth. But you know what? Just Pearly Things is being straightforward in the lead attorney's chat room. Let's look at uh, her commentary. She says, Sam Music, people get lost in having 100% of nothing or 30% of something. Can I get a da 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 sound effect? Yeah, that is her saying that, um, you know, it's 30% of something, right? Now, hold on, there's more. Sam Music, I'm looking for someone to do my morning show on London at 30% cut if anyone's interested. Like, stop the show, like. Yeah, this is not looking very nice, young woman. Um, maybe you want to keep this to yourself. In these streets! I mean, come on now, like you need to stop playing. But then there's more evidence like this. Sad music, I absolutely need to get my NDA game up! And then there's another one. Here's the most disturbing one, guys. I'll be on the music! I promise you there is a whole line of talent waiting to take the deal whoa, 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 whoa. then another one more for that music i'd like to offer all of my critics the opportunity to offer my talents better deals i'll give a list of all the monthly expenses and they can see if they can give them better deals. like number one huh this this young lady if she has ad- advisors you really need to just stop Stop! Dima alter my voice. Stop! Like stop. Stop it. Get some help. You you know you you think going you've already been labeled as somebody who brought Nick Fuentes number one. That's number one, right? It's already a bad thing. The videos have been taken down. The pro blacks have come after you in a major way. Then you make an apology. Then you make a threat after the apology. Then you go and align yourself with people who really hate the black community or have that kind of content or that stigma. I won't necessarily say they hate the black community. We just have uh, some brothers and sisters that are a little bit misguided. And now you're coming out admitting what the guy said about you. The guy is not wrong here. And, 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 and the reality is, as a YouTuber who builds channels and built my channels, you could, I'm not going to tell you how you're going to be okay with that. But number one is this, right? You had a, a one deal with the guy. You changed his deal. Now you want the guy to take that deal. And to be honest, who, uh, who's to say that your channel is going to work out? Nobody's to know that, right? And, and then you're trying to make the guy out to be a villain. People are really coming after this particular brother that i've seen i've seen some crazy streams that he wasn't a part of um i thought that was a little bit unfair and we have our young jpt individual who is not you know, I, I, like i said who's admitting this and admitting this she's not saying the guy's lying so then now why if he's not lying what's the reason for the copyright strikes then because the copyright strikes didn't come until after he released his information so why are you copywriting his content now on this channel you're only doing so because you feel like he betrayed you by telling the truth that you're now admitting to. And again, we talk about unaccountability, and this is the red pill grift. A lot of people in the red pill gr- community, both men and women, are liars. It's the community. It's the truth. They say one thing to get clicks and do another. Like for me, example, I will always tell you that I have been tricking it off since I came into the sphere. I have had a problem with tricking. I am not going to stop. I am not perfect. I have my B A N days which is, uh, you know, your bish, jazz, jiggas, if you want to say that. Yeah, I have those days. I will admit that. 
and I'm going to be weaving and selling and dusting up every day. That's what I do. But I'm not out here trying to lavish like my life is so much better than anybody else. No, because I'm going to go ahead and hit this Hennessy after this podcast and get drunk as F. And I do not care if you unsubscribe. Please do. I'm still going to be out here weaving and selling. Okay. But I love you guys. And uh, yeah. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Drunk. We're for all that you do. Sorry, the belt. We are out. Yeah.